schistosomiasis. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast, Mollusk Monday. As always, I'm your host, Melissa, and today we have our resident expert, Dr. J, joining us. Uh, Dr. J, how are you doing today? Good, Melissa. How are you? I'm doing great. We have a lot of stuff to cover, so why don't we just jump right in? Let's go. Uh, Before you get started on that, I think you have some parasites to release. All right. It seems like we have a special and uninvited guest on our episode today. Um, who are you? Oh, uh, it's just me. I'm a friendly parasitic flatworm known as schizomyosis, and I live inside you in your sporocytes. Parasitic? That doesn't sound friendly at all. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're right, but you'll get over it because I don't really harm you. I only harm certain mammals like uh, cattle, dogs, cats, rodents, pigs, horses, goats, humans... You say that like it's a good thing. Well, it is. For me, anyways. And why do you care about humans? They saute you in butter and like to serve you as an appetizer. Touché. Anyways, I love infecting humans and their animals. Once I'm in, I infiltrate their water supply and boom, I've got thousands of potential hosts to choose from. And how do you pull that off? Well, I've got some pretty neat tricks. I float around in fresh water as a cercari, and once I come into contact with a human, I have the ability to penetrate that person's skin, and then I bury into them, lose my tail, and become itty-bitty. Then, using their own circulatory system against them, I find my favorite organ, the liver. And once I'm there, I grow into a full-grown, massive flatworm. I thought you were microscopic. Uh, don't interrupt me. And anyways, that's besides the point. As I was saying, once I'm an adult worm, I lay a lot of eggs and soon migrate to the bowel and rectum. Then humans secrete me out and I eventually end up in more water. I'm free to open to roam the open oceans and seek more victims. I thought you said you lived in freshwater. What did I say about interrupting me? Yeesh. Well, that's cool and all, but how do I play into this? Well, I'm glad you asked, my swirly shelled friend. You see, my eggs aren't fully mature, and they're not ready to venture out into the world. And that's where you come in. They need you. Oh, so I'm like a parental figure. Uh, not quite. They end up penetrating your flesh and feeding on your tissues. What the? But it's fine. You live. Ugh. And then once they're developed, they produce sporocytes, which is where I'm made. A developed parasite ready to leave my snail, enter this world, and infect more humans. Oh, so you're leaving my body? Good. Oh, that's rude. And honestly, I love living in you. You're such a better, you're such a great host compared to those pesky humans. What do you mean? Well, in humans, I cause super minor symptoms and they totally overreact. I just cause things like abdominal pain, diarrhea, bloody stool and urine, which sometimes leads to liver damage, kidney failure, infertility, bladder cancer, blah, blah, blah. Those don't sound minor at all. All right. I admit some of the symptoms aren't minor, but because of that, they go to doctors and they try to get rid of me. Can you believe that? I I can absolutely believe that, but I think this is a good time for Dr. J to chime in. Um, Doctor, what is this all about? Well, yes, we, the doctor, give patients anti-parasitics. To disrupt your life cycle, and we can paralyze you from your growth, thus killing you. Uh, So if humans can get rid of these parasites, how does their species survive? Well, that's a great question, Melissa. Um, Goose parasites live in Asia, South America, Africa, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, where these countries and continents are lack are where these countries and continents are extreme lack of first world health care that specifically is in Antarctica. The antiparasitic drugs that would stop you. However, last year alone, you have affected 240 million people. Whoa, that's insane. So even though you can stop these parasites, they still afflict nearly a quarter of a billion people every year? Yes, correct. We have attempted to prevent them um, we are, however, we are underfunded and under-equipped to deal with your domination in the world's tropical areas. Uh, what kind of prevention attempts? Well, 
Humans have tried a lot of things to improve sanitation, killing off snails, preventing chemotherapy treatments, and making antiparasitic drugs. Wait, what was that thing you said in the middle? Oh, uh, preventative chemotherapy is no, just... No, 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 no. The killing snails part. Uh, yes, humans have killed snails by a million using pesticides as a prevention measure to keep you from regrowing. You're the reason for snail genocide? I'm done with you, Dr. J. We have to work together to get rid of them. <laughs> oh, please. You and your mobile home aren't going anywhere. What did you say about my shell? You heard me. Forget this. Get out of here. Leave. Leave. Let's go. And we'll be back after this short break.